Today I'm going to talk about geodesic deviation and we already did a one-parter. I will put a link in the description below to refer to that one. In this one though, I'm going to calculate the geodesic deviation in a slightly different manner. In the last video, I did it in full generality, but here I'm going to go into a local Lorentz frame and I'm going to calculate geodesic deviation based on a local Lorentz frame. So what's the setup? We have essentially two geodesics. There's a geodesic one over here, where the geodesic is x alpha, so that's a four parameter t, x, y, z type of vector that describes with a parameter lambda that describes the path of a particle through a geodesic. Okay, and then there's another geodesic, geodesic two over here that is located in a accent, which is very close to a, and it's separated by a factor y alpha. So y alpha here is z alpha minus x alpha, right? So you have an origin here, for instance, and you go to minus x alpha plus z alpha, and you have your factor pointing from a to a accent, and that's considered y alpha over here, okay? There are also velocity factors. So in geodesic one, there's a u alpha velocity factor, which is the differentiation of the position factor x alpha with respect to the affine parameter lambda, okay? And you have the same in A accent. And again, A accent is very close to A. And initially, you start with two test particles that are parallel. So you can see that u alpha and phi alpha are, in the beginning, parallel. But because of geodesic deviation, that will not be the case later on, okay? As I explained in my previous video, because of tidal forces, there will be deviation between the geodesics because this test particle will uh, experience the gravity, the gravitational field, a little bit different from this particle, okay? Now, in location A, we have our metric G mu nu in A, which is essentially the Lorentzian metric, right? So it's something like, depending on your convention, N mu nu could be something like 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and the rest zeros, right? So that could be your metric there. The same for A accent. There's also a similar metric there with N uh, mu nu. In A, we have our Christoffel symbols. We consider it a flat, spaced, uh, flat space here. So our Christoffel symbols or connection coefficients in A are considered zero, okay? And you can always do that, even if you have curved space time, if you go local, in a local uh, Lorentz frame, you can always say that this equals zero. Very locally, that's the case, okay? Because it looks flat. So locally, we consider this flat space time, and we will essentially look at small perturbations to see what happens at A accent. So at A accent, you can develop your Christoffel symbols with respect to A. The idea is that you always express everything in terms of what happens at A, because then you can compare things and you can uh, calculate acceleration components of Y, for instance, but it all happens in A. It, it, it all is referred to uh, with respect to coordinates in A. So you have to develop your Christoffel symbol in A accent essentially in a Taylor expansion with respect to A. So you do that in a normal Taylor expansion like you do here. So your Christoffel symbol at A accent is the same as your Christoffel symbol at A, which is zero in our case that we assumed here, flat space time, locally, plus a derivative of your Christoffel symbol with respect to the coordinate x comma times that little factor pointing from A to A accent, Y gamma, okay? And that's a differential factor between Z alpha and X alpha. And usually this is very small. Eh? And this amount, by the way, is also extremely small, right? This is a very, it, it's a small compensation on top of what you have here, which is zero in this case, but this is a very small quantity. So keep that in mind. 
Okay, so now we can set up our geodesic equations in here and in here. So the geodesic equation for the first one in A obviously is just zero. So the second d squared x mu over d lambda squared, second order derivative in A equals zero. And that's essentially exactly the same as flat space time, right? Your second order derivative is essentially uh, zero, which means that you get straight line motion, right? Constant motion. And that's what you assume here. And that happens when you have flat space time, when there is no gravity essentially. And in approximation at that point, you can say that, okay? For the second geodesic, that's obviously not the case because your second geodesic has an A accent and has a Christoffel symbol or connection coefficients that are not equal to zero. Also, you have your V alphas there and not your U alphas that live here. Okay, so this is the geodesic equation in A accent. So what you would like to do now um, is combine these two equations and that's our next step. So we can combine the above equation and try to express all these quantities in A. And you do that by first looking at this and this is already what we did in our previous one, right? We expressed the uh, Christoffel symbols in A accent with respect to A, we did that here. And we're gonna use that quantity, right? Which is expressed also over here. We're gonna use that quantity together with the assumption that V alpha in uh, A accent in first order approximation is equal to U alpha. And we're gonna fill that out. And if we do that, we can express the DZ uh, U second order derivative with respect to alpha in A accent we can express this in terms of A. So now everything is expressed in terms of A. Y gamma is, is expressed with respect to A. This first derivative is expressed with respect to A and also the, U, the U's of course are expressed with respect to A. So now we have the ability to subtract those two, right? Because Y equals Z alpha minus X alpha and if you subtract this minus this that all live in alpha in a we get this expression right it's the same as here because here it's zero so if you subtract z mu minus x mu you obviously get this term back so now you have an expression all expressed in point a so this all lives in a all these components here are defined in a and not in a accent of the second order derivative of y, the y vector, with respect to lambda, right? This, and this already is some sort of acceleration component. Okay, so now let's go to the velocity vector of separation and how it is defined. If you are in curved space time, you define these with covariant derivatives, okay? So your derivative, so what you essentially calculate here is you you look at the y mu factor and how it varies in the direction of mu, uh, in the direction of u, okay? So you look at your y factor and when, once you go along this geodesic, you see how y varies with respect to u, yeah, with respect to the velocity factor over here. And if that's the velocity uh, factor, if you want the velocity acceleration, you have to do it again. So you do it twice and that's what we do here. So we take this velocity factor over here and we differentiate one more time in a covariant way. And you have to do it in a covariant way because you have curved space time, of course. Even though you're in a local Lorentz frame here, you still have curved space time globally. So you have to take care of that, right? And this all lives in A, by the way. So this, this gamma here, these Christoffel symbols, you can say, hey, they are zero. Why not make it zero immediately? Yeah, that's all good and well, but you can only do that at the end of your calculation once you differentiate it. Because the fact that this is zero in a certain point doesn't mean that the derivative is also zero because with derivatives, you compare various values, right? At various locations, and usually with a simple derivative, you calculate fx plus delta x minus fx, right? In your definition. 
and at x plus delta x, this is definitely not zero in A. But at x it is, of course, here. Okay. So you have to first differentiate and then you can make them zero and not before. So if we do that, we first differentiate in a covariant way this first factor and that gives you these two components. And that's essentially this definition differentiated one more time, right? So you get d squared y mu d lambda squared plus the differentiation um, uh, plus the covariant term. And that is this term with y differentiated towards lambda. And that's what you see here. That's the first term. Okay. The second term with respect to lambda gamma is just using the product rule. So you first differentiate the first term, you do that here. Then you differentiate the third term, that's what I did here, that's this term, right? You do the covariant differentiation with respect to u beta. And then here you do the covariant differentiation with respect to y. Okay? And you get these three terms as a consequence of that. Now you are in a position to actually say, okay, now we can assume that gamma, because everything here lives in A and not in A accent, this is all A type of components, you can say the gamma is zero, all the Christoffel symbols are zero, so this term goes, this term goes, and this term goes, and you are left with essentially this term and this term, and that's what you see here, okay? So now up to an order gamma squared, we have an expression for the acceleration here. And usually a big D indicates that you do covariant differentiation and a small d means you do normal differentiation, right? And you have to do covariant differentiation. Let me reiterate that one more time because there is curved space time. And what that means is that the base vectors rotate. If you go from position one to position two, the base vectors rotate and you have to take care of that rotation also. It's in Cartesian systems you don't have that. Your base vectors EX and EY always stay in the same uh, direction. So you can move around your vectors without impunity and it will still work. And if you differentiate you can compare vectors by just moving them around without impunity. You cannot do that in a curved space time because these base vectors move around also and that is reflected in this uh, connection coefficients. <clears throat> okay, so we have now calculated the second order derivative, covariant derivative of y. So this is a term for the acceleration of y. So how fast y is moving. Okay, and what we also detected where the tidal forces really come from, that really comes from the fact that there is a differentiation with respect to the Christoffel symbols. This is really reminiscent of these tidal, uh, tidal forces. And that gives rise to uh, the Riemannian curvature, as we will see in a little bit. Okay, We also calculated this one. And now we're going to fill out this one into this equation. right? This, this component here we, will be filled out here, and you get this minus this. Right? So this is now the acceleration with respect to lambda of your yu factor, 4 factor. And that gives you this. And if you rewrite that a little bit, you get this. And this is really the Riemannian curvature. If you look up the definition of the Riemannian curvature, what you also see that there are a number of other terms in there that are not here. And those are terms with respect to just gamma, right? So this is not really the Riemannian curvature, but it is the Riemannian curvature in flat space time, right? And that's what we did here. We took a local Lorentz frame. In this local Lorentz frame, this is the Riemannian curvature, even though there were other components, but they are zero. So this is the Riemannian curvature in uh, your local Lorentz frame. Okay, so now we essentially evaluated and derived the geodesic deviation, as it is defined, you, uh, using local Lorentz frames. And the geodesic deviation here is now expressed in Riemannian curvature. And we, could, we also found where it came from. It came from the differentiation of your Christoffel symbols, your connection coefficients, that actually gave rise to this Riemannian curvature component. Okay, And you could not see that with a general uh, 
fully generic derivation that we did in part one of this uh, this video sequel okay so i think this is a great place to stop if you like this video please subscribe and please like and i'll see you in the next one